Hey guys, and we're going to do some compositing now in Blender to finish off our Lord of the Rings um, scene. So this is what our compositing nodes are going to look like. So again, it's a little bit complicated, but I'm going to include a screenshot of it in the um, package which you can download at the bottom of here. So um, the end of the previous tutorial, this is how far we got. So it's looking pretty good, but there is um, a few small changes I want to make. Now, first of all, I want to make sure that the ring is sitting on this surface. At the moment, it's hovering a little bit above, which is why you can see the light coming underneath. So we need to fix that by making sure the ring is sitting on the surface. So I'll just drag that down a little bit. So that should help now. Yes, yeah, so we have a proper shadow around the bottom. Um, okay, so compositing. One of the first things we need to do is in our um, render settings here in passes we want to turn on um, object index um, because what we're going to be doing is making um, multiple passes when we do the rendering and we're going to want to make sure that we have um, I think it's material index, not object index, um, turned on. That is all we need turning on here right now. Now we'll come over to our materials and we need to set the index of these materials. So the outer ring and inner ring are going to have different material indexes. So down here in the settings, the pass index for our outer ring will be 2, and the pass index for our inner ring will be 3. So in the material settings here, make sure we set that pass index for the two different materials. Okay, now we'll open up our compositing window. We're going to turn on Use Nodes, and we're going to turn on Backdrop. We won't see anything just yet because we need to do a render. So I'll just hit the render button and we'll render out an image. So this is just a um, sample image. It's not our final image quality, but it's enough to get us started here um, in our compositing. So let's get started with this. The first thing we're going to need to do is mask off an area. So that's why we use those material indexes. And you'll see that um, material index is here in our render layers. We've got index MA. And one of the first things we're going to add in is going to be a despeckle node. I'm going to drag that in there. Okay, so this will help to clean up our image a little bit. Um, if we zoom in down here, by adjusting the values here, it will actually clean up some of the speckles. It, we won't see it so much right now, because this is a low quality render anyway, but later on you'll see it um, just helps to clean things up a little bit, will help to make a difference. Now we're going to add in an ID mask. Now this ID mask is going to be plugged into our index and we're going to need to set our two indexes. So we'll have one ID mask which will be two and the other one will be three because remember we set our two material indexes as two and three. So we need to insert both of those ID masks for the two different materials. That is our inner ring, which we set as pass index of three, the outer ring, pass index of two. So there's our indexes two and three there. Now we're going to put in a math shader, which is going to add together, oh, sorry, the mix shader which we set to add and we're going to drag both of those 
ID mask into there. I'm going to decrease the factor a little bit. Now I'm going to add a dilate and erode node, which this is going to plug into. And from step, we change to feather. You're going to see the effects of these in a short, short while. Um, if we hold down Shift and Control and make sure that uh, you have the Node Wrangler turned on. So, Node Wrangler should be turned on in your add-ons. Make sure that's turned on. So now, when we hit down Shift and Control, you'll see that we now actually are masking off these two areas. There's ID Mask three for the rear and ID mask 2 for the front. So we're masking these two different um, parts, we're adding those two masks together and then we're going to add a little bit of feathering to this. Now we can feather inwards by going negative and we can feather outwards. Now the feathering is kind of blurring around the edges of those and you're going to see how we're going to use that in a short while. So we're going to add in now a another mix shader which our dilate in the road is going to plug into but it's going to plug into the factor of the mix shader rather than the image. Our D speckle is going to plug into the image of this, the top image. Okay, we'll just spread things out a little bit. And it should plug into our composite, right? Okay, so now you can see we have this funny effect going on around around here in our composite preview so because we're now combining mixing together these these two images so this image and this image are now being mixed together over here now we're going to work on adding some sparkle to this text here And you can also see here our add. If we drag this back, and see how much of that is being added together. We want to change that to mix, so we can adjust the mix of these two. We want it to be about halfway because we want the effect to apply to both. Okay. Now we'll go back up to our top line here and we're going to add a glare node. And we're going to plug our D speckle into this also. And for the glare, it's going to be streaks. We'll change that to high. We're going to have two iterations, four streaks, and we're going to adjust the angle to around 23 degrees. Now, fade can be left as it is, and the color mode, we're going to set to zero. Then we're going to add in a blur shader and we're going to plug that in there and we'll change this to fast Gaussian relative and it's only going to be a small amount you need a little bit of blur so we're just going to set that to 1%
and I'm going to add an RGB curve. Which will be here. And we're going to plug the blur into the RGB, into the top image. Now we're going to add another glare, so we'll duplicate this one, drop it in under here. And this glare is also going to connect to our original image there. The settings for this, however, instead of streaks, will be a simple star with three iterations. Threshold set to 0 0.9 and fade will be 1. Now we're going to add in a mix shader. where we're going to mix these two together. And we're going to duplicate this mix shader and plugging into this mm, no, actually it's this mix shader here is our final one we're already at it We plug this into the bottom of that. Okay, and finally, once we plugged it in, you can see the final effect there. We now have this reddish glow around the outside edge. It looks like we've got um, kind of a bit of a flame going on there. Now we can go through and play around with these various settings here to adjust how much of this um, glow that we have. Now you can see there's a very subtle star edges coming off of there. And by adjusting the feathering, you can see the changes that this makes. So. If I set the feathering down to minus 100, you'll see that we get a very little amount of glow around the edge there. But the larger I set this number to, the more we get glow, and up and up into a maximum of 100. So you can control the amount of this effect by adjusting the feathering there. Now here with our RGB curve, we can begin to adjust the color of the output that we get around there. So you can see that this is altering the, the sheen that we have to the gold texture. So you can play around with these curves to get the right type of shade that you require whatever you think looks good and then you can adjust this the factor of this mix here so a hundred will completely bypass this
and also then adjusting the mix here you'll see will affect the glare if you set this up to one you get a very orange color going on there it doesn't look quite right so you need to adjust this mix value to get the color that you desire so we get to about 0.2 and then by adjusting the threshold we can adjust how much of that star effect we actually get So the higher the threshold, the less of the stars you're going to see. So if you set this very low, you're going to get quite a bright effect going on there. I'm going to set that to about 0.4. See, and then also with this glare here, we can play around with those settings to get the type of effect that you want to achieve. Again, the amount of mix is going to play a part in this. The higher we set this threshold, the less of the streaks you're going to see. You know, so just the number of streaks that we have, you can see the effect that it has here. Fade is, you can see then how quickly the, the glowing effect is going to fade off. The mix you'll see darkens the surrounding outside area. So with this compositing, it's just really a matter of going around and playing with the settings to get the, the look that you want to achieve. And once you're happy with how it looks, we can be then pretty much ready for the final render. So quite happy with the way this is looking this glowing effect on the ring there it looks like it's 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 glowing it's been burnt into the ring um, so I'm gonna go back to my default view I'm about ready for the final render so we'll come over to our render settings here Sampling, no sampling presets. Go to final, you'll see that'll set that to 24. I'm going to up this actually to 40. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time to do this final render, but uh, we'll see what the result looks like. So there we've got our final finished render. There's a few little things that you may want to still do with this. Um, you might want to play around with your bump map there, make that less bumpy. Um, but uh, effectively, this tutorial is over. You've got the good idea now how to use the um, node editor to create these um, textures and this um, glowing effect to the ring now. Hope you find this tutorial useful, and I'll see you next time.